this is perhaps the most fundamental and critical aspect of video editing as to what are the different kinds of cuts that are possible to create this lucid, gripping, entertaining narrative that we all want to make. The first part that we are going to talk about is a cross cut. Now a cross cut is typically cutting different kinds of uh, shots, uh, probably of different energy levels and probably different uh, people in different spaces and you know different parallel activities happening and making them look like one unit and uh, you know making them look like one cohesive engaging unit so a cross cut typically will have two different people performing different activities and you match you cut one action of person a with a, another action of person b and in this way you establish a relationship going on between these two individuals and when you watch these sequences as a whole uh, sorry, these shots uh, in a sequence, it will, you know, make that entire thing look like one unit and hence you will get a, a cohesive viewing of this series of different shots. In a match cut, uh, unlike, we typically know that you know when we want to, you know, uh, in our lesson on motivations for cut, we spoke about, uh, you know, when we want to cut from one uh, shot to another shot, you know, we, we have these different motivations. Now, sometimes we can create these motivations visually, we can force a motivation onto a scene as well. or so, so to speak, we can design a motivation. And one of the ways by which we can design a motivation is by establishing a matching point. So if you exa remember the example where Rebecca was, uh, you know, writing a letter. Now, uh, you know, and we, you know, we did a cutaway to the shot uh, of a clock. Now, we can do a, you know, match cut. The same sequence can be done as a match cut by you know, establishing the sh a clock right in the same room where she was writing the letter. You know, you kind of pan to the uh, to the uh, to the shot of the clock while she's writing, and then you uh, begin your next shot with the same clock or a different clock, but you know which looks similar. So if it's a circular sh clock, then you choose a circular clock uh, in another space. And then you establish something completely different. So in that sense, you have used the, uh, you know, firstly you have used the similar, the common point of a clock. And then you've also chosen a similarity of, you know, the way it looks. So that when you're cutting from the clock in Rebecca's room to the clock in another space, maybe a bank or something, you may... You know, people get this connection that, okay, you've cut from one clock in this room to another clock. So in this way, you have matched, you know, uh, the action. Uh, you know, you've, you've made a connection uh, between two separate shots by using this visual element of a clock. So that's why it's called a match cut. There are different, better examples of match cuts also. Uh, you know, if you remember this film, uh, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, you know, the movement, sometimes the similar point could also be the movement and the similar lookingness or something. So, you know, when you, uh, you know, uh, when the bone uh, is, is seen moving in the air in a certain form and suddenly you cut to a satellite. So, you know, the, the shape of the bone, the shape of the satellite, the way it is moving, both were matched so that you know when you actually when these two shots were put together people do do they uh, uh, do they notice 
that you know you have switched from one space to another the similarity of you know the shape and the way it is falling uh, it doesn't create a jerk and it in fact creates a very interesting way of transitioning into a completely different space so that is an a very good example of a match cut <laughs> Now we'll talk about the uh, the last and the most interesting uh, form of a cut, which is a jump cut. <coughs> Now, throughout we spoke about uh, you know we we did a lesson on uh, continuity. So throughout uh, you know all our sessions uh, during video editing, we emphasize so much on maintaining continuity, not letting the viewer. feel the jerk while he's viewing so that his viewing is very seamless you know uh, and non jerky but there could also be a possibility where you you know purposely want to jerk the the viewer or you want to do away with the monotony and the mundaneness of you know repeating actions you know and creating and all the time focusing on maintaining this continuity so what you do is you you purposely allow these jumps in action so you you don't really bother about matching so when you're you know from when a character is moving from one space to another you don't bother about matching his uh, you know actions the light and this and that you purposely you know keep this in between portions missing and let the viewer you know look at that uh, sequence in a jumpy format probably your the idea is to basically uh you know disturb the audience or you know the situation that you're shooting in itself is uh, you know very chaotic and jumpy so you really want to create these jumps so you know in in a sequence that we saw uh, in one of our other lessons where rebecca was doing these different actions in a fast way so if i just cut out these different actions uh you know uh, and and i just keep cutting uh you know she drink uh, you know she she writing something to she typing to she drinking you know just those you know absolute actions you will find that you know the in between portions so her movement from one place to another has been skipped out so probably that is what uh, you know you, uh, you want to do you you, you, don't, you really don't want you know to the, the, the smoothness and this you know we don't want to get stuck in the whole idea of continuity so you basically jump from one action to another and so that is why it is called a jump cut 